Welcome to Woodshop 101, where everything is made up and the points don't matter. Now meet the yin and yang of woodworking and the lady that keeps them in line, Jeremy, Drew, and Sam. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 55. Tonight we're going to talk about our number one top tool this year. We are joined tonight by our guest host, Steve Carmichael of the Carmichael Workshop. This is for the second time in a row. This is very, very interesting. How you doing, Steve? I'm doing great. How are you guys? I'm doing not too good. bad. Seems good, like we just good. talked like five minutes ago. I don't get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, like I said, we didn't. We don't want to scare you off, but the night's still young. Yeah, I like listening to the podcast whenever you guys put one out. So it's going to be weird listening to myself <laughs> <laughs> again. Yeah. Now that Twice we don't have rest. Sam, people people might be disappointed, you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. They'll have yeah, to it's, for the next nine months. Sam is a hard act to follow, so, yeah, I'll do my I best. Thought you were, I thought you were going to say Sam's a hard ass. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I mean, she did keep us in line a few times. Yeah, yeah. very strict. Yeah. Until her very last strict. few shows. Then she just kind of, she just kind of let loose, and I had to... To find the bleeping button in the editing software a few times. <laughs> I have to say, uh, Todd Clippinger's message at the end of uh, the podcast a couple uh, episodes ago was hilarious. Today? Yeah. If anybody missed that, you want to go back and listen to that episode. I don't remember which one it was. but The episode that uh, I released yeah. today? Yeah, you got to make sure you go back and listen to that one. Yeah, uh, and stick or, stick around to the end of the podcast to listen to Todd's message. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Todd, Todd's a good old guy. He he kind of kind of knows us all too well, I think. Yeah, well, I talk, I mean, I talked to Todd quite a bit through like Instagram and stuff like that. So he uh, he's definitely a different character. And one of these days, I'm going to make it up to to Montana and visit him. I got some. Uh, family up in Montana that I'm going to visit and figure I'll spend a, a couple of days and go by his place too. So, well, very cool. Well, so let, let like like I said, this is our, our really fast and loose episode. So we're just going to get right down to the topic. So, what is the number one tool for 2016? What is the go-to tool that we have come to? favor in our shop for this year and I'll, i guess i'll start because i'm sure they're gonna put me on the spot if even if i d- defer it to them <laughs> um <clears throat> my number one tool for this year and it pretty much is the same every year just because this tool is probably my 90 to 95 percent workhorse in the shop and that has got to be my table saw it seems like there's always something that I did not know that I could do that I figured out how to do on the saw. And, uh, there's all kinds of jigs that you can make for it. Uh, all kinds of techniques that you can execute on it. Um, even all these join it videos that I've been making probably 97% of them. I think I've only done one rat really on the router, <laughs> but, uh, all of them have been done on the table saw and it's, it is just a, so, so much of a versatile tool that you really don't realize it until you start applying some of the techniques that you didn't know that you could do on the saw. And I, I learned that each and every day. So, um, I would say that my, my table saw is, is probably my go-to tool for this year. And it was probably last year too. Okay. So if you can't say that, say the table saw is out of the picture, what tool would it be? Um, and that would probably be my router table then. Isn't that all I can connected s- to the same piece of okay. equipment? <laughs> because that's how I made it. <laughs> For those of y'all that don't know, and, and if you're listening to this, I'm more likely you do, but back in, I think it was 2013, I had constructed a gargantuan table saw cabinet. Uh, it was just full of storage, but I was able to incorporate and turn a cabinet grade saw, or not cabinet grade, but a, a contractor saw, into a cabinet saw basically 
including dust collection, storage, router table on the end with a 52 inch fence. I mean, it was a it was a monster project that basically turned my shop 180 degrees from what it was, and um, it was it, it's just one of my big basically work surfaces in the shop that can do just about anything I want it to do. So um, my router table, like I said, it, it's attached to one end and uh, it utilizes the same fence that my table saw does. So um, it's just as accurate to use uh, because I took so much time to make sure that everything was nice, flush, level. Uh, so yeah, probably my router in my router table. Okay. All right, well, I mean, I see that. Don't judge. Don't judge. Uh, hey, hey, no judgment here. No, you've been you, you've been judged. You've been judged. <laughs> Put a stamp on it. There you go. So, all right, Steve, what is yours? All right, well, I have to say uh, I have a different kind of tool this year that uh, I am determined to learn more on. Uh but my all-time favorite tool is the bandsaw, just because I can get artistic with it. And I have a new scroll saw that I like, but the tool that I'm determined to use more often this year uh, is my new Excelsior mini lathe that I got from Rockler. I got that, and the uh, they have a three, uh, three-piece three turning tool set. The carbide tools is the mini tools I think it's the medium size one that they sell. Um, but I've turned about, uh, well, less than 10 things on it so far. And I really like using it. Um, but I uh, tend to gravitate toward the bandsaw and scroll saw. So I'm determined to, by the end of 2016, uh, get better at turning and doing more turning projects. And I'm uh, about to buy a lathe chuck, which anyone who's uh, been watching my videos and following my YouTube channel, uh, several videos ago, I was asking for recommendations on lathe chucks um, so I could do some bowls and stuff like that. And I still haven't bought one. So uh, <laughs> I'm determined to get a lathe chuck and do some more uh, turning on my Excelsior lathe. So that's the tool I'm I'm kind of focusing on learning more about this year. What is your rough price point for a um, chuck? Uh, I've been looking around the $100 range, which would be like your Nova G3. I've seen Barracuda, I think, is another one. Um, and I think uh, Ron Brown sells one at uh, the Peachtree Woodworking Supply Store here in Atlanta, where our club meets. I've seen that one in the store. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as usage goes, I would probably use it maybe once a month. So I don't want to sink a lot of money into something that I'm not going to use okay. a lot, you know. The re- so The reason why I was asking is because I have experience with two. Um, I have experience with the um, Easy Wood Tools, Easy Chuck, which is f- fantastic. But you're looking, you're floating somewhere around the 300 to $400 range. Um, yeah. But it's it's it, it's a given for what it is. That thing is fantastic. Um, the one I currently have is just a Wood River. Um, I think it was a hundred dollars, right right at a hundred dollars. Um, if you buy it in store, it's really like about a hundred and twenty because you got to buy the adapter separate. However, if you go into the Woodcraft store and tell them you want the online deal then they will give you the adapter and the chuck for the $100 price that it is online. Because online, the adapter is included. Um, And it comes with, I think, three or four different sets of jaws. Um, If I remember right, it comes with like three or four separate jaws. So, I I mean, if that's maybe something else to look into, um, you know, if you're going to use it about once a month, kind of identify what jaws 
um, you would use and see and see if that already comes with it. So yeah, it I mean, sounds I really like, like it. So it sounds like that would allow me some flexibility to do different types of projects as well, yeah. having different types of jobs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have any recommendations as far as I've heard? Uh, there's some that you tighten with just one like T handle, and then there's some that you tighten with like two uh, rods. So I mean, uh, I, ideally the one with the T handle is so much easier because it, it, it's it's an Allen wrench is what it is. It's it's a yeah. T it's a T Allen wrench, and that's just it's so much easier. Um, but the Wood River is the two um, handles that kind of, that you kind of just opposite push each other. Um, it can seize, um, pretty good, like with the friction, but I haven't really had a problem with it. And that's the one that I have the most experience with turning. Um, so to me, as much as I use it, getting that, like that one little feature, it doesn't outweigh getting a chuck for about a hundred bucks and it coming with a couple sets of, of jaws. So oh, okay, I mean it. It maybe an extra few seconds to to get it unloosened, but overall, yeah. So so yeah, don't let the one the one handle versus two handle thing weigh a lot in my decision. Yeah. I guess I mean it do, it it doesn't <laughs> weigh a lot in mine. Somebody yeah. that like Carl Jacobson that uses his lathe every day. Yes, maybe, but if, yeah. if you're using it like once a month, I would not let it weigh heavily on your decision. I would look right. at what offers the most versatility. Yeah, who's this cool. Carl Thanks. Jacobson you're talking of? <laughs> you no, know, um, you need to start using your lathe, <laughs> and then you'll. Figure it out. Watch some YouTube. Then I'll know. Videos. Then I'll know who that is. Yeah, yeah. watch some watch some YouTube <laughs> videos, um, and and then you'll you'll understand. He sounds like an old guy. Well, I mean, you know, he he probably knows more about the lathe than you do. So, I think he's forgotten more about the lathe than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping buying this lathe chuck will motivate me to get out there and use it a little more. Do you guys do that? Do you buy buy tools just to get you, see if it'll get you motivated to do something? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's quite funny that you said that because what I'm going to recommend today, I bought thinking I would use more of it, and it, it's <laughs> not been the case. <laughs> um, no, I yes. Yeah, so to answer your question, yes, I do buy things. In hopes to use it more, but that usually and doesn't. Let's happen. hear what that is. Um, well, so what I'm going to recommend is actually the Lee Nilsson Low Angle Jack Plane. I bought that uh, three, like three months ago, and I've used it a few times. Um, again, bought it, thought I'd use it more than what I have. To my defense, I haven't had a shop really for like going on two oh, months. No. Here we go. <laughs> I, I got to justify it. Uh, no, so I bought right, well, within the few weeks span of each other, I bought th- three handles. I bought a low angle block paint plane, a Lee Nilsson low angle jack, and then I bought a um, brass hammer from Dima. Um, all just to get more into like hand tools, not necessarily strict hand tools. I would never do that. I can't give up power, um, but more like Mark Spagnuolo's like hybrid approach. Um, so I kind of did a lot of research on like what tools would best fit into a hybrid approach method. Um, so yes, I did buy tools in hopes of using them more. I haven't, but it doesn't mean I won't. Um, now, if you want to go with like what I've used the most this year, probably my lathe. I've used my lathe quite a bit this year. Um, 
just getting out. I mean, it, it's quick. Like if you just want to get out and piddle around for 30 minutes, you throw up a chunk of wood and you can have something done in 30 minutes. So, well, you can. You yeah, can really. too. That's how you learn. <laughs> Steve and I are like, oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's how you learn. I turned a football on the lathe. Yeah, so you've turned uh, a while back. You've turned two footballs and, on the lathe, if I remember. Yeah, yeah. Somebody asked me to make them one, so I did. And that that football was on the lathe for like a week. I would kept <laughs> I kept tweaking it and tweaking it and getting it to look the right shape and everything. It just I'm just slow at getting the the right curves and shape. That now I let's want. go back to what I said. I didn't say you could go like make a specific project or something big. But if you just want to go out, like you just throw up a, you know, a piece of scrap up there and, and, and play with like, okay, I'm going to learn how to make, you know, coves in it, or I'm going to learn how to do some roundovers or whatever, you know, and, and you want to do something smaller. Like you want to make a, a uh, pizza cutter, you can make it that handle. Things like that are just so quick. And it's, it, if you find yourself getting into burnout with woodworking, that's a quick way to help you get re-inspired because you can get several projects done fairly quickly. Um, and you know, you're not waiting days or weeks or years to get projects <laughs> done. <laughs> In case y'all didn't see that, he looked back at his dining room table. <laughs> Let's see. When when will they be listening to this? Um, they're going to be listening to it on the nineteenth, which means I will have one week left to have this table done. <laughs> it's already setting deadlines. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, deadline September thirtieth. I Trump still say December. Sam's gonna be calling. Yeah. <laughs> so. Hmm. Yeah, so I would say right, well, that's probably my go-to this year. Steve, I'm I'm going to be there with you. I'm I'm going to try and learn my lathe as well because I'm I'm wanting to turn a pin. I've cool. got some of that that uh, wood that I'm, you know, this ash that I'm putting in the epoxy mixture. There is some wood that I can still use that uh, I don't know if I'll need to. I guess harden it. I don't know if it's got punky parts from from being uh, burned or not but uh i want to take some of that and turn a pin so cool. i've got the the pin turning kit i just don't have the <laughs> right now the motivation to to try it because <laughs> i just don't know how to use it yet i, I think s- one of your um hosts that have been on this podcast has a video out about turning a pin hmm uh-huh. Whatever that is. Well, you should have sent me one. That would have given me a lot of inspiration. Sends you what? A pen? <laughs> a pen. Yeah. Okay. But no. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make a deal with you on air. When you receive a pen in the mail, you have. Oh no! Don't give me no deadline, Mister T- uh, Dining Room Table. <laughs> give me till the end of the year. Okay. You have until. December, what, 31st? So there's 31 days in December? 31st, yeah. So you have until December 31st to have turned a pen. All right, well, I don't want no crappy one. Give me a good one. <laughs> oh, now we're getting demanding. <laughs> now we're getting demanding. Or you could make me a rock and H pen, you know, blue and black. I'd have to find, either find acrylic of that or laminate some like some like a uh, gabon ebony or something. The only the, the problem is now where I'm staying now, I have no woodworking stores around me. <laughs> yeah, I have I no think... no rockler, no woodcraft. I have anything. The closest thing I have, I think there's a rockler. No, there's a woodcraft like three hours away. Well, if I'm driving three hours, I'm on. Might as well drive the opposite way three and a half hours and go to like Highland Woodworking or Peachtree, um, you know, there in the Atlanta area, and then go get shocked by a, a skill saw and somebody shot. Yeah, <laughs> by my 
1960s jigsaw. So that's that's the problem. So you know, I used to go pick up all my stuff locally. Um, now I'll have to reach out to a, a good friend of mine that s- sells pretty lucratively uh, pin blanks and see what he can come up with. So got got just gotta have a rock and age pen, blue and black. I'm gonna send him a pink one. I think I have a pink one left. I'm gonna send you a pink one. I'll forward that to Sam. No, I'll my, my wife can. would like it. I'll see if I can do a blue and black one for you. I have P Street nearby, so I'm sure they've got some blanks I could use. Yeah. So I'll hook you okay. up, Drew. I, I will I will make sure that I turn a pin before the end of the year. Once you realize, once you do one, you're like, this thing was so easy. I'm going to do it. Yeah. yeah, then you start batching them out like 10, 20 at a time. And then you start hating to turn pins because yeah. it's so monotonous. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that'll give me a, a good introduction on turning those so I could do some other things. Like there's a little little finial on the top of my wife, or excuse me, my daughter's bed that it's actually missing one. So I wanted to duplicate a finial. So, I will give you the recommendation of don't do a slimline pin for your first pin. Any pin that's got two blanks on it is automatically harder than doing one that's just got one blank. So, now I, a, that's the only ones I've done are slimlines. I haven't graduated to them <laughs> bigger size oh, see my first one ever was a wall street and then i did slim lines because the slim line pinkish is so much cheaper than everything else but it they don't sell worth a darn and they take twice as long to make so now you get creative like steve does and make them out of like drumsticks and stuff like that, then the slim line's the way to go. Um, but I I try not to turn slim lines. I, I that, like the uh, the fifty caliber bullet clicker pins. I like those. Yeah, those are cool. Have a few of those already made, I think. So those kits are like what fifteen dollars yeah, or something like each. Like the, bu- yeah. the bold action ones. Yeah, they're. Thirteen ninety five from Penn State. Yeah, if you screw it up, can you buy a, a new tube or something so you don't have to replace the whole mm-hmm. kit? Absolutely. I might have to try that. You can. The good thing about PSI is they they have all replacement parts. So like, if you break a clip trying to put it together, you can call them and they'll send you a replacement part. And it might be a dollar or two or some shipping or whatever, but. They they'll send you replacement parts. So now you're gonna have to leave that link in the show notes. Penn State Industries. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot you don't know what that is. You know what that is, Steve? Yeah, yeah. I order my pin kits from there. You get okay. like five five packs for a certain yeah. deal. Yeah, for like yeah. This, the slim lines. Yeah. All right, yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll leave that in the show notes and. Drew. That's mainly for me. <laughs> No, one thing about you pin need to turning, stick to your local store because you'll get overwhelmed with Penn State. Dude, there's going to be so much on there. You're like, I want to turn this and this and this and this and this. Yeah, yeah. And then $150 <laughs> later, you're going to have 30 pin kits. With pin turning, the the thing that tripped me up in the beginning was trying to figure out how to finish them. What kind of finish to use? Because everybody out there has their own method and their own... Uh, products they like to use and I eventually ended up doing CA finish uh, when I first started but now I've been using um, uh, what is it pins plus I think it's called it's like a uh, walnut oil kind of shellac thing just because it smells so good (laughs) didn't microjig kind of come up with that or something like that yeah yeah or someone uh i forgot who it was it's up in the northwest northwestern u.s i think is where they're from where they, they put that product yeah. yeah 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 you're right it, it is very 
different from person to person. I mean, I don't do CA finishes because CA on a thicker film is notorious for cracking. And you see it all the time. People, oh, my finish cracked. Well, then you just ruined your blank. Um, or you have to turn the finish off and restart. I do um, one to two coats of thin CA just to seal the wood. And then I use um, triple E um, paste wax or tri- triple E polishing wax that's got fine micro crystals in it to polish the CA glue to just to make it. Um, to, to kind of make it smooth and then I go with uh, Mylan's high friction polish and I put on five coats of that and it makes awesome awesome finish um, but you're right I mean there's so many different methods out there you just kind of have to kind of play around with with your method and I mean that's that's my go-to method that's because how I learned um, the person who taught me pins use that method so it's all about experimentation, and I'm not necessarily w- willing to experiment on my finish. I mean, so. Okay. What well, uh, uh, is that it? Yeah. Are we done? Yeah. Man, that's quick. That's I don't even know how many minutes that was. <laughs> oh, we're we're, well, we're floating, flies. We're floating close to thirty. Oh crap! <laughs> so much for that. Okay. Well. Uh, if you guys have a recommendation for whatever your go-to tool was, be sure and send us an email. You can uh, even call us by voicemail, but the ways to contact us are pretty simple. You can go to woodshop101podcast at gmail.com and send us your tool recommendation that way. We can feature that on air uh, just as some feedback that we are getting from you. Uh, you can also call us through voicemail at 409-234-3959. And we can play that on air and uh, feature that. And if you have any questions, you can contact us the same way. Ask your question, and we'll feature it on air. Um, each of us have a special way to contact us individually. And since we have a guest host, Steve Carmichael uh, can be reached through his website at uh, the CarmichaelWorkshop.com. And I believe your email was the CarmichaelWorkshop at gmail.com. And Jeremy and I also have contacts through our website. Uh, mine is rhwoodshop.com, and Jeremy's is thecountrysideworkshop.com. Uh, you can go to our contact section. Be sure and send us feedback that way. And if you are trying to reach us individually, we also tend to bring those questions to the podcast as well. So be sure and listen in if you want to have uh, another aspect or prerogative of the question being answered by the other hosts uh, maybe you can get an answer that you can't get from one of us individually so I, I usually give better answers than Jeremy anyway so yeah he does. <laughs> uh, but no uh, we, we really appreciate your feedback uh, you can head over to iTunes and YouTube uh, be sure and leave us some comments, tips, suggestions, whatever to help us make this channel that much better. Give us a rating on iTunes to help us get into the public eye that much better. Um, and we'd we'd really love to hear from you guys. So this episode was uh, one of our fast and loose ones. We do this every other week. And then we also have a longer episode uh, in between that every other week. Uh, so guys, if you have any more info, be sure and get in contact with us. So from Jeremy, Steve... And myself, we want to wish you guys well. Be safe in your shops. We want to thank Steve for joining us tonight uh, for the second time in a row. Thanks a lot very much, Steve. Thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Thanks for coming by. Sure. Anytime. All right. And we will talk to you guys on the next podcast. One, two, three. Boom. Boom.